Hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Total War Rome 2 in our Empire Divided Palmyra series. This is going to be quite an interesting episode. We just achieved Imperium level 5, Imperium level 5, excuse me, at the end of the last episode. And what that means is we can now train not only additional armies, which I think we already had room for additional armies, but now we definitely have budget room for additional armies and we need to train one. Uh, but also uh, we can train new spies, we can train new diplomats, well, one of each. So one new spy, one new diplomat, and one new champion. So we'll be using that, as I mentioned last episode, to reinforce uh, the... or not really reinforce, but so much as to train the legions in Africa that are sweeping across this continent, taking control of the bottom of the map for Palmyra. But uh, at the same time, we have to kind of do things in order. We're out of money this turn, but what I'm going to do is, first things first, I'm going to make sure that all of my main city buildings are upgrading to their maximum possible, um, you know, just size. Because having those benefits, for instance, this is right now just a pull list, but if I upgrade Ailey Capitolina to a level 3 city, that increases our wealth from subsistence by 100. We do get some additional squalor, but we get lots more growth per turn for the province, as well as double public order per turn. Now, there is additional food penalty that comes from this as well, but it's uh, there's just plenty of reasons that we want to have these things in place as soon as possible. So we're going to be focusing on that. I'm going to go ahead and end the turn now as we, uh, as we begin. Still keeping an eye on Aurelian's Rome, he's really struggling against Tetricus. Surprisingly so, I have to say. All right, so Hispania Satyria wants a non-aggression pact. That's hilarious. So they know that we're a threat. And they are very concerned. Oh, we have a plague in Rhodes. So we are working on research right now that will help us with our squalor, with our sanitation issues. But uh, so far, it seems like uh, Rhodes has not escaped their sanitation problems. So rat catchers have raised sanitation in Samosata for four turns. They've employed the tools of their trade to deal with the situation. Their methods are fast and effective, which is to be expected given the exorbitant amount of money they've requested. Yeah, we did pay him a lot of money. So let's go ahead and say accept. Uh, we have what looks like Bithynia at Pontus, which is one of our new territories. Nicomedia, see, we need to go ahead and uh, upgrade that city. So public order is on the rise here, which is good news. And then Africa is also a motivated province. Now, Certus, I will get to upgrading you, I promise, once I have upgraded all of my main cities, like Antioch. Yeah, see, Aelia Capitolina still needs to be upgraded, in fact, and so does Ankyra. So we're going to be spending this, we're going to be doing this a couple of times per turn. As a matter of fact, tell you what, well, hmm, hang on, I did, I did train my additional diplomat, so let's go ahead and get him doing administration, to kick up taxes in Aelia Capitolina, and also start him gaining experience. Also, how much will it cost me to train another champion. Okay, we'll wait until all of these upgrades are underway. So let's go ahead and end the turn again. You know, I could have moved my armies that turn, actually. My fault. Just goes to show I'm determined to get the economy spinning up as rapidly as possible to support the new armies we're going to need to build. But we got peace negotiated between Sakistan and the Mayin. And between... Oh, wow. Alright, so they were at war with everyone. Wow. Oh, Okie dokie. Ooh, Mithraic feasts. Good. Recently, there has been an unexpected increase in commerce in this province. The exact reasons are unclear, but some attribute this situation to the presence of Mithraists, who regularly order large amounts of food for their secret feasts. We are courting Mithraists, in fact. We have a number of Mithraist cities already. Let's see. Pergamum. Yep. We need to upgrade that. Just going to keep those going. And I suppose one thing I can do, like I said, I can go ahead and move my armies a little closer. They don't even know that this army is in their territory. So I can do terrible, terrible things to Hispania Citeria anytime I want, really. Matter of fact, I could attack Grama right now if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep them hidden. And I guess, do I want to go ahead? This army's ready to go, with the exception maybe of no, they're ready to go. I don't think I need to expand them any farther at the moment. Let's get you over here. So far, Cyrene is not under threat. Let me double check just to be sure. Yeah, no one is sailing towards Cyrene, even though it's ripe for the taking. 
Uh, as soon as we have the opportunity, we're probably going to train a new army in uh, Egyptos. I might also start them in Antioch because of the field engineers workshop. We need to have an army with actual siege equipment. We've had access to the freaking field engineers workshop for a while, and I could bring some of my armies back once we're done fighting wars up here and give them siege equipment. War declared between who? Oh, the assassin is the... Okay, this was not a peace declaration. This was a war declaration, interestingly enough. Faction destroyed. Numidia. All right, Numidia no longer exists, probably because these guys have wiped them out. Yeah, Hispania Satir is doing quite well. They are kicking Rome out of Africa. So we are going to have to return Rome to Africa. Yes, I know. Inspired populace. Very nice. Hidden agent exposed. Is that so? Okay, so we have an agent here. What do you wish of me? Is there anything I can do, though? Actually, there is. I can solicit Trader. Very low chance of success. I can manipulate him. Also low chance of success. Tell you what, let's just go ahead and have her guarding. I'm not liking the fact that there's an Armenian agent hanging out there. Upgrade that unit, please. Also, hang on. There's one thing we can do. We might not have the money to do this, but... Wait a minute. Oh, that is Pessinus. Okay. So we can adopt this guy next turn. I was upset in the previous episode after what happened, or I think two episodes ago, maybe, uh, after what happened with the previous general. We can, uh, we can bring this guy into our family. It's fine. So we will focus on that. And then influence-wise, let's have a quick look at how we're doing. We do have the ability to switch to Empire. But it costs 10,000 to do so. So let's see, we get a huge research boost. So we can declare ourselves an empire. We would not get extra experience for all of our recruits, which has been pretty handy so far. We would get an additional number of available, e or an additional available edict. <laughs> and then additional loyalty for all political parties, as well as extra recruitment slots. That just means we can recruit one, por one more unit per turn. So we can recruit armies faster and we research faster. We lose a tax bonus. And we already have a recruitment slot bonus, as a matter of fact, as a kingdom. So right now, I'm gonna keep it I'm gonna keep us as a kingdom. But for story purposes, we will switch to that at some point when the time is right, I think. Alright, let's take a quick look around at our armies. Because there's no reason to sit around for too long. I mean these armies are pretty much ready to move. For instance, I'm gonna move you into Ankyra. The Legion of Alagabalas. <laughs> Uh, this one, let's see. This is Zenobia's force. They're training very well. You can see that they're rank 7 at this point. You're starting to see some gold echelons. And there will be more as they level up. I kind of just want to move through the top here and take this territory. So we're going to take Amasea with this army and take Sinope with Zenobia. I don't really think they're going to be able to stop me. So let's move Zenobia out. Let's have her get an ambush mode. We're going to keep a spy near Ubar to see what he's going up to see what he's got going on. And yeah, let's go ahead and end the turn. Well, like I said at the end of the last one, things are about to get really interesting. I just need to get these upgrades going. Roman pretenders still want a defensive alliance. That's adorable. I'm going to say no. I also need to see if I can get a trade deal with one more party, I think, for one of my bonus objectives. Okay, so we have our Pat patrician who has leveled up. Trading ships from a distant land have arrived at the port. The foreigners look like they could use a bath, but offer to trade exotic animals. So we can allow trade, allow them to stay. Send them away or confiscate their cargo. Hmm... Let's allow trade. Let's let's let that happen. I think we've already done this once, but I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and give him zeal. And then you need to have dignitary so that I can move towards being able to increase taxes even higher. Population surplus in Libya. Very nice. So first of all, let's get that upgrade going, and we can go ahead and expand Cyrene here. Now, could I go ahead? I think it would be wise to go ahead and put a workshop here. I think that's what I was going to do, in fact. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, and now let's go back around our cities, because again, I need to make sure... Hmm. 
Hmm. Farming settlement or civil settlement? Extra growth, extra public order if I go with the civil settlement. Extra wealth from all sources. No, let's go with the farming settlement. And we're going to continue focusing on these guys here. Extra wealth from all commerce. Ooh, if I go ahead and upgrade that, the silk market will help us get a little bit better across the board. And this is a better research rate. So let's do that too. Again, we <laughs> this is this is going to take a couple of turns. We have a lot of economic moves to make, but we can also make some military moves at the same time. Let's see. Right, so you come here and hide. And I do still have to hire my new agents, but my cities are top priority at the moment. Wait, did I already move you this turn? No, I didn't. You're good. The movement bars are weird sometimes in this campaign. I don't I've never seen them them do this before. Yes, I know I'm trespassing in Armenia's territory. That's because we're about to declare war on Armenia. Very much unexpectedly to them. How may I serve? Actually, speaking of that, let's get our spy up ahead of the army a little bit to have a little bit of a closer view of sign up. Okay, there's an Armenian army in sign up. We might want to wait until they are clear. That could be interesting. All right, so this navy is still still healing up. I kind of want to bring this navy over to Nicomedia. So let's do that. Public order is fine there. So they're going to be stationed there. Meanwhile, we can go ahead and hit Leptis Magna. And we can hit Gorama in one fell swoop. Yeah, see, what's going on with the movement points here? Get a little closer so I can see the city. Yeah. Grama is ripe for the taking. Let's go ahead and declare on these guys. They're allied with Gallic Rome. I didn't see that coming. Well, I mean, we're going to be at war with Gallic Rome eventually. We need to keep taking territory here where we can. Do we wait? Until we finish doing some fighting up here? Do we play it careful? Or do we maraud across and take a lot of this territory and grow stronger? And maybe that will take Galax Rome, Galax Rome's focus off of Aurelian for a bit. Hmm. And Aurelian will be able to harass him some more. Yeah, you know what? We're going to do this. So they're joined by Galax Rome. We are now at war with Galax Rome. And uh, I'm going to... I could go ahead and siege the city right now, honestly. They don't have a very strong garrison here. I will go ahead and... As I kick my trash can, I'll go ahead and get some light siege towers going. Let's continue that siege. And then you guys, Leptis Magna should fall pretty easily. So, tell you what, this is a pretty major city. I kind of want to fight this battle on the map, but we're going to do Garama on the map instead. So, Leptis Magna is the site of some of the most majestic Roman ruins in Africa that still stand. Okay, so now we control two provinces in Africa, including a, um, a greenfield city. Well, not provinces, but two cities in, in uh, Africa. Two regions in the province of Africa is the technical term. So we are now definitely at war with our good friends, the Gallic Romans. Quote unquote. Does that make us the Palmyran Romans? I don't know. We're just going to call ourselves Palmyra. Looks like, no, Ptolemaeus and Meroe are still separate factions. For a second, it looked like this was one color down here, but my eyes were tricking me. Oh, that's two. That's why. I thought that was one territory. It's this one and that one. So there's Meroe and there's Ptolemaeus Theron on the map. Okay. This is going to be an interesting turn transition, I think. I'm kind of hoping this army leaves Sinope. All right, we're now at war with the other two Roman factions. What will Gallic Rome do? As long I rolled the as dice a little bit. Remains, we would be to count you as no. 
Spania Citerior, it looks like they are moving forces not in the direction you would expect. Okay, Sassanids control Hegra. Ships to the ports. Okay, of course, we are getting a 100% wealth bonus from all commerce, but there's additional squalor from the exotic animals. The animals turned out to be highly sought after possessions that have boosted commerce. Unfortunately, they've also turned out to be infected with disease, which has spread throughout the province. The health of the local populace has drastically deteriorated as a result. That's a shame. Okay, so Pergamum. Yeah, we need to keep upgrading our settlements here. Alexandria. Yeah. <laughs> God, so much. All right. How much does it cost to dismantle this? Yeah, let's go ahead and get rid of that. Or not. Thousand. It's not what it says. It says 800 to dismantle. So the game is lying to me. I don't like being lied to, game. But it's lying to me anyway. All right, so Ailey Capitolina now has this religious gathering. Petra, I could go ahead and set up a Mithraic gathering that would help with sanitation in the area let's go ahead and do that doesn't cost any money now i believe we have a spy in this area hang on all right they haven't withdrawn their army from here this is Zenobia's army. I mean, she could probably wipe the floor with these guys, but let's get a little closer and see what they are. Yeah. <laughs> probably would wipe the floor with them. I would guess. Much lower level general. Much lower stats. Also, you're just not Zenobia. Let's just... Hang back for now. Okay, good. This unit needs to get out of rapid march mode and just hang out at Nicomedia, please. Continue to heal up. All right, Leptis Magna is ready. Are we ready to siege Garama? I think we are. Yes, we are. We have siege engines. So let's go ahead and run this battle. Shouldn't take long. But this is one of the larger cities we've we've attacked. Oh, it actually looks like the same city map as um what was the city we just fought for? Was it Nicomedia? No. Which city was it? That's a shame. It's the same city map. I wasn't expecting that. It looked like it would be different. I mean, it's not going to look exactly the same cuz we're out in the desert, but mm, it's definitely the same city map. Yeah, it actually... This doesn't look like desert to me. What in the hell? Okay, well, I'll try and make this quick. Let's see. I could also make it a little bit different by having the battle be slightly different from the last one. So, let's do that. Let's put a siege tower there. And a siege tower there. Let's have the ladders roll up to those walls. And those walls. And hopefully we'll be able to. Yeah, we should be able to. One, two, three. Yeah, there's, looks like there's three spots there. One. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. And then we need the archers doing their usual thing. We're going to do flaming shots. Have them run forward as soon as possible. And once again, let's have our good friends, the cavalry, in just one group. Hanging out, waiting for the gates to fall. I'm going to be fast about this. And then the... Heavy Spear Infantry, I guess what I can do is have you guys follow the two Siege Towers. Okay, pause. Go. Go. Oh no, there we go. Perfect. Can you not? That's the closest they can get. Oh well. Alright, there's that. And then let's get our archers in position to harass the crap out of them. And go. So of course they have their men lining these walls. This is our first field battle against Hispania Citeria. I would imagine it's not going to go too different than expected. 
We have it on speed three, of course. Archers are getting in position. Definitely taking some hits. So their slingers are doing a good job of tearing my archers up. Let's go ahead and withdraw these guys. Archers are panicking a little bit, but that's fine. I managed to get some cover fire in place, and now my units are almost at the walls. Good. So those archers decided to not run away. <laughs> Always a plus. We'll see if we can finish this siege before the end of the episode. Shouldn't take terribly long. All right, ladders are up. Once again, the ladders have beaten the siege towers to the wall. All right, here comes the siege. Very good. Oh yeah, this is gonna go nice and smoothly. We pretty much have our units. We have a unit confronting each of theirs. Grama should fall pretty easily. So this, this faction controls a lot of Africa right now, but they're about to lose a lot of territory very, very quickly. Okay, their archers are starting, or not archers, but skirmishers are starting to get a little bit uh, nervous. Rightfully so. Vigiles are already losing decisively. We are taking control of the gates. These Vigiles are currently being attacked on two sides, so hopefully we're going to actually start taking the gates soon, but these slingers, 59 of them in fact, still in position, should make... Okay, good, our flag is going up anyway. Oh, nope, just kidding. It's going to fake me out. Right, let's get the speed up a little bit. What's going on here? Why why are these units struggling so much? So you're struggling against the spearmen. They're losing decisively. Not sure what's happening here. I mean, this isn't their last city. There's no reason for these guys to have this much trouble. All right, good. These Vigilace are almost gone. Seems like every time I fight against enemy Vigiles, it's... <laughs> there's some kind of just unusual amount of, um, of determination. We talked about this in the comments several episodes back. And it's happening again. Alright, let's, let's get everyone over here. Alright, so the walls are ours. Soon they will literally be ours, and you can see the heat. You can tell we're in the desert that way, that's for sure. Okay, so we control the gates, I saw that. Let's go ahead and have the archers come in. We will have the cavalry ride in. to here. Let's see, if I put them like so, come on, there we go. We might be able to take control of that section of the wall as well. Alright. Let's see.
Those are not lined up at all. All right, there we go. It's a little better. I'm gonna try and get all the infantry off the wall. Oh, hello. Well, that was unexpected. General was not hanging out in the middle of the city as planned. And also, these cavalry, I was not expecting them to ride around this direction. They were all supposed to go that way. But it's okay. Some of them are now coming around the opposite direction. And they're going to finish these guys off pretty quickly. Like this. Alright, General is now flanked. His units should... Uh, should, maybe? What's trample? Nice. All right, let's end the battle. That was pretty straightforward. Garama is ours. I was really hoping for a different city map, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is why I auto-resolve a fair number of battles when they're not particularly significant battles. So I always get my hopes up that We'll have unique city maps, but like what happened with Alexandria, a lot of times they end up being kind of carbon copy battles, so if it seems like some episodes I'm just flying across the map, and that's why. The vanquishers of the East, the brave men of this army, have known many victories, only their courage facing the enemy exceeds their skill at arms. And Timogenes, this general, leveled up as well. I can't adopt that general just yet, but I think there's a couple of uh, generals that I need to adopt. This is the leader of a faction, I believe, so I can't do anything special with him. Let's go ahead and give him uh, engineering experts so that he can have better siege equipment, obviously. And then, yeah, let's make him an efficient recruiter. All right, Grama now belongs to us. We can go ahead and convert that to a city in one fell swoop. I wasn't expecting that. That's quite nice. And we can move on Sidimus in the next turn while this army also prepares... Oh, this army can actually move now. I can keep going. See, the, the only problem with just marching across the top here with only one army is that all of these cities uh, are vulnerable to me at the moment. So it looks like they actually have Carthage under siege. So while Carthage is under siege, we can just be marching up, taking a ton of their territory. I tell you what, I'm not even going to put them in... Let's move quickly. I'm not going to put them in Rapid March, because that'll open them up to an ambush, but other than that, I'm going to have them move as rapidly as they can across the top of that uh, continent. And I do still need to build another city. I know, believe me, I or not, not another city, another uh, army. But until <laughs> we have all of our main chain, you know, like cities upgrading and, and doing really quite well in that regard, um, I'm not going to wait until they're all level three or something, but I want to have them all started. Uh, before I spend money on anything else, because that's going to help the economy continue to grow going forward. Also, we are just two turns away from finishing that sanitation research, which will be a huge boost to us, and also give us a... Well, no, we have to do one more research before we get that 10% uh, tax rate boost, but that'll be a nice jump as well. On that note, I will go ahead and stop this episode here. We control a good amount of uh, Northern Africa. We control almost all of Africa, almost all of the Zania. And then uh, Numidia and Mauritania are next... Uh, just the question is, we we need to have some more armies in play as soon as possible. Going back to what I was just saying about the economy, in order to make sure we can hold all this territory, because we're starting to get stretched out a little bit thin. Stay tuned. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. Oh, also, that reminds me, this is episode 18. This is the first time I'm saying this in a Total War series on this channel. That's how long it's been since I've played Total War. But in case you're new to the channel, and in case you don't know how things work here, Sometimes, when you're playing a, ca uh, a campaign, excuse me, like Total War, and you're playing a campaign like The Long Dark, what'll happen is you have um, a series that just goes on and on and on and on and on and on in both time slots. And I realized a long time ago that one of the things that can get really um, tired and really kind of stale is when just two series, no matter how good they are, no matter how, how many people like them, are just running both time slots for a month or two or three because they're both long-term games like Total War and the Long Dark or others that I've played. So what I do is every 20 episodes of a series, I do a content switch in a time slot and I switch to either a new series or I switch to a series that was already going in that time slot. In this case, if you're watching this live, if you're watching this in the backlog, watch the next episode. It's probably out for you already. But if you're watching this live as the episodes are being released, what that means is that in a few days, for those of you looking forward to the resolution of the Eight Ages of Khmer series in Civilization VI, we 
will be jumping back into that. And it's a really, really exciting point. So if you are a Total War player who has not started watching Eight Ages of Khmer, this is your chance to get caught up or at least start to get caught up because the campaign as of episode 20 of that series, when that series went on break, was at a really, really interesting point. So I get to jump back into that in just a few days after episode 20 of this. But of course, what that means is that this will take a break uh, while Eight Ages of Khmer finishes up. If Eight Ages of Khmer doesn't take another 20 episodes, which it probably won't, uh, we will either bring this series back a little sooner or we will do another new Civilization series uh, for some time. I, I kind of play that by ear depending on what people are most interested in and what I'm really feeling like, honestly. But that's the basics of it. I haven't explained that so thoroughly in a while, but I think I've got some new viewers on account of this being my first Total War series in a while, so I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Like I said, comments are always welcome. New episodes coming out every day at noon. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.